All right, we're live. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us on our membership virtual panels. Uh, first, we'll begin by letting everyone introduce herself. Uh, my, starting with myself, my name is George Simpson, and I am your Region 4 Publications Chair, and I am one of your hosts for tonight. Hello, everyone. My name is Malik Hughes. I'm your Region 4 Engineering Diversity Chair, and I will also be one of your hosts for today's Q&A session. George, you want to give an introduction? Yeah. Hey, everyone. This is George, your Region 4 International Membership Chair, and I'm here tonight to host this event. We also have Nia Simmons, um, your Region 4 Membership Chairperson, on the call as well. You'll be able to ask her, call, uh, ask her questions as well, and she'll type her responses in the chat. So um, let's just go ahead and kind of get started with the first question. So the way this kind of be structured, we'll kind of set some, ask some preset questions um, to the membership, I mean, to the REB members, and then we'll open it up to everyone who's watching live. And you can, tap, you can type your questions in the chat box. Um, so first question, we'll just go to uh, Loco. Why did you choose to run for your applied position? So um, the reason why initially, um, so initially I had started, uh, uh, I was on the road of uh, getting to uh, a leadership um, spectrum for myself to build upon. And I had done some uh, previous uh, roles in NSB as well as like outside of NSB. And so I wanted to push myself to the next limit or to see how much more I can do if there's more if I can find something more of myself. And so um, that's the reason why I ran for international membership was because uh, I wanted to push myself to a certain, to, the, to a, an extent where, you know, I learn from as well as I teach other people. And by that, my main, my main goal was to also help establish uh, pe uh, each school's chapter so we can have a functioning SB. Um, Nia, do you have your chat on? So we'll give Nia a uh, quick second to type her response in and then we'll read it back. While she's typing that question, we'll, we'll just maybe um, We'll ask another question while Nia kind of still gives her responses. So George, how has being a Nesby leader impacted other areas of your life? So Nesby has um, shown me uh, uh, a way that um, I could help manage myself as well as the a group of uh, of people, and so it's like I have a responsibility on myself to make sure that I can perform well. And so NSB um, pushed me to the limit and pushed me to a certain extent where I have to cope with knowing that because people are, people depend on me. And so I mean, it's been a great journey in NSB so far, and I know there's more to come, and I know that this, I can reach a certain goal I wish to go get to. So Nesby has been a great, um, great tool for me, and I would, there's no way I would uh, I could pay back. Okay, um, we just had our chair 
Ms. Shelby Prater joined the call, so we'll go ahead and let her give a quick introduction. Hey everybody, Shelby here again, Region 4 Chairperson. I'm glad to be here, but you may have to repeat the question for me, Malik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first we'll give Nia's response to the last question, which was, why did you choose to run for your position? Um, and she said, um, to make an impact on the Nesby community, because she saw some challenges um, that students faced at a predominantly white institution. Um, and so she thought that by running for REB position that she could make an impact in that, in that way. Um, so Shelby, for you, kind of asking the same thing, uh, why did you choose to run for chairperson? Yeah, awesome question. So it was a challenging, challenging decision. Um, I really wasn't sure at first, but after having a couple of conversations with the past chair, uh, Danny Rinder, it felt like this was the right position for me, um, given, you know, my concerns, which are similar to most of yours about the state of our society, our region, and I guess, you know, my passion for um, strategic planning and things like that. This is kind of the position that fit me best. Okay. And then the next question that we asked Shelby was, how has being a Nesby leader impacted other areas of your life? Oh, definitely. Um, so coming into this position, um, public speaking was definitely an area of improvement for me. But after having uh, to get on stage a couple of times and uh, address members of a region, it's gotten way better. I'm a lot more confident just um, not only as a speaker, but as a person, I have a lot more, uh, I guess, a deeper understanding of what it is that I'm good at. Um, serving this position has challenged me and stretched me in so many different ways you wouldn't believe. But it's helped me not only articulate what it is that I, I love, um, but I guess find a place where I can do that full time. So yeah. um, essentially, you know. Got me my full-time job. Awesome, awesome. All right, George, you want to uh, ask the next question? All right, so um, that brings us to our next question. And so we will direct this question to George Loco first. What other organizations are you a part of? And how have you been able to balance NSBE responsibilities with the responsibilities of those or other organizations? So um, I have a, this strategy is uh, it's one of my on my whiteboard. Um, I divide my I divide the whiteboard into three sections, which is my parking lot. Um, so you not know, the garage, my parking lot, and to uh, leave in the garage. And so I strategize like I I put everything that I have to do on the parking lot, and then I pick one at a time. So I move like a sticky note to like the middle part. And then that's like a park car. And then I moved it from the park car to uh, a moving car. So like, that's how I kind of time manage, manage myself. Um, so I've, I've able to be to combine leadership in NSB and on campus as well. Um, I'm part of the Engineering Leadership Institute. Um, we, wait, we meet every, every week around 6 a.m. in the morning. We have great breakfast and uh, we just discuss business and stuff. So, um, it's helped me strategize, start my day early, um, just trying to, you know, blend into the professional setting. So it has definitely um, pushed me to the limit where I have to really practice what I wanted to preach. And so um, we will move on to Shelby next while Nia has a chance to type her answer. Um, so Shelby, the question was, what other organizations are you a part of and how have you been able to balance Nesby's responsibilities with the responsibilities of those of other organizations? Yeah, sure. Thanks, George. Um, so uh, this is my senior year. Um, so I'm not super involved with other organizations other than um, a couple of ones on my campus. So there is... Um, something called MSTEM Academies, which is just like a minority mentorship program here in engineering, and then like NACME Scholar. So um, it's not terrible balancing my responsibilities uh, within the organizations just because I don't have 
a leadership position in those organizations. So it's pretty simple to prioritize uh, different events and responsibilities when uh, you're running a region versus just being a general member. Um, but I think that for me, and this is just kind of how I operate, um, I rely very heavily um, on Google Calendar. So I make sure that everything I have to do is in this calendar. Um, otherwise, I forget about it um, just because that's how my brain works. And I'm, I'm sure to write everything down. So um, it really just helps with organization. Um, again, prioritizing, okay, if I have certain events that happen at the same time, um, you know, which is going to come first, which takes longer, things like that. So I mean, I'm able to do that uh, with that Google tool. Thank you, Shelby. Um, so Nia's answer is emphasis balance. Uh, you know, nobody is perfect and it can get difficult to manage everything going on at once. I think the key to, I think the key for this was for me, was time and it was, ah, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna start that over. You know, nobody is perfect and it can get difficult to manage everything going on at once. I think the key to this for me was going to a time management counselor and a therapist. Uh, she emphasizes to take, take charge of your mental health first and to stay organized as best as you can. It is not terribly difficult to manage, but, is, but it is possible and fulfilling. Um, also, her Go response ahead. to the last question, which was how has Nesby impacted other areas of your life? Uh, Nia responded, uh, Nesby has been a labor of love since high school. It has helped her manage her mental health while going through life because life is full of trial and error. It has taught her how to be an empathetic leader in school and in her internships and co-ops. And it has much, it has given her a lot more confidence in herself um, and in others because of Nesby. So for the next question that we'll ask the board, um, we'll start off by asking this question to George Loco. So how does your position international membership share, help members excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community? Um, <clears throat> so our, you know, as this position goes, um, we try and help the international students here in the U.S. studying. in. And so we, we are more of like a home, uh, away from home for them. And so we try as much as possible to make them feel as such and by creating the atmosphere and environment for them, for them, to, for for them to succeed academically and uh, succeed professionally. So, I believe that um, um, my role as a international membership chair has really will actually bring together, make people feel at home, even if it has to be at a convention center or, or at a conference. So, it's it's definitely um, a good a good thing. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Shelby, how does being the regional chairperson support Nesby's mission? Yeah, definitely. So given that my role is a lot more hands-off than other positions, um, a lot of it has to do with planning, again, and then back to the strategy, like I'll say in probably every answer. Um, but I also think, you know, there's another part of that. I think that being chairperson, it's also really important that um, I live the mission out and kind of lead by example. Um, so it's really important to me to make sure that I'm living the mission and I am academically excellent, that I am uh, succeeding professionally and positively impacting my community, whether that be um, volunteering at, you know, the park cleanup or working with kids at the local hospital, on the hospital, local high school, um, whatever it is that they're working with, exposing them to STEM and things of that nature. Um, but again, within my position, a lot of it goes into overseeing the work of the admin zone, um, including the, the membership zone lead and ensuring that um, they're working diligently 
to host these programs, to run um, all of our communication efforts and things of that nature that will help our, our members um, stay abreast of all of the things that we're doing to help them achieve that mission. Absolutely. Shelby, could you just briefly speak on if someone was interested in the vice chairperson's position, um, kind of how that role supports not only the board, but still the NSBE mission as well? Definitely. Um, so as vice chairperson, um, the role is definitely twofold. So on one hand, you are responsible for managing the entire regional executive board. Um, and then on the other, you're responsible for overseeing the work and directing the work of the membership zone. Um, and I guess speaking strictly um, with membership, this one is a little blurry because again, this, this role is twofold, but directing the membership zone um, really takes a person who also lives the mission, but one who is very focused on the needs of the membership. Um, and here, um, that means really understanding where our members lie, like what their progress is right now with their academic standing, with their job searches, with their community involvement, understanding where they are now, uh, where they wanna go and figuring out the, the steps to get them there. Okay, and then the vice chair will go and you know, tell the zone about that so that they can execute that. Um, but I think as, as the, that vice chair role, you need, really need to be, um, one of the experts about the membership in all three of those areas so that you, so that you can help them and help the rest of the board help the members, um, achieve the mission. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. George, you want to go ahead and ask the next question? Yes. And so our next question is. What advice would you give someone who is considering running or applying for your position? And so we will uh, begin with George Loco again. So I'll let you have the floor. Um, I'll definitely say give it a tr give it a try, even if it's something that scares you. Um, I just believe that if you open your mind and you open yourself to this uh, this opportunity i know you grow as a person and you see something different so i'll always say give it a try there's no harm in um trying if you don't even feel like doing it but um at the same time just know that there's a light there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's amazing and so great answer uh george and so we will uh move on to shelby so what advice would you give someone who is considering running uh, or applying for your position? All right, so I'm gonna answer for both the chair and the vice. <laughs> um, if you are considering running for the region four chairperson position, I encourage you to do a couple of things. Um, one, do your research. Um, and that includes being on this panel asking questions like this um, one-on-ones with me, with people who have been region four chairpersons, um, really just understanding what this experience is like and getting as much insight as you can. Um, and I guess that also goes for the vice chair doing your research because both these positions are equally demanding and rewarding. Um, so it's kind of important to know what to expect. And then also, I would say that you really need to be in touch with why you want to be in this position. Um, because if it is for the power, for the title, then you are in the wrong position. Um, and I guess that's pretty general for all NSB leadership, but the chairperson and vice chairperson positions are, um, they can be sort of ambiguous. And even though we have positions that are very well outlined in the governing documents, Sometimes um, being an administrative leader requires you to step out of your comfort zone, step out of what's outlined for you, and you need to be willing to do that. And I think that what drives that is, is passion and knowledge. Um, so again, being in touch with why you want to do this, doing your research on this position, talking to people who are in this position, um, and really just, just being committed 
to the role. Thank you, Shelby. And so I will go ahead and read Nia's answer to our last question, uh, which was, how does your position help the members excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community? And so Nia says, uh, she thinks this position requires you to think outside of the box, uh, as well as every other position. And what she means is you have to pay attention to your membership and you really have to understand the culture during the time of your term. It is taking the mission and breaking it down to what it really means to live the mission, as Shelby was saying. They may have not answered. Uh, <clears throat> and so, yeah, so that was Nia's answer. And so do we, if we, uh, as stated before, if we have any questions from the audience, please leave them in the chat box on the YouTube link and we will be answering those questions live. Uh, don't be shy, ask anything you feel that you need information to. This is a great opportunity. And so, Wes, I will read, before we move on to the audience questions, I will read Nia's answer to the last question. And then, as I said before, if you have any questions for anyone on this panel, please leave them in the chat box and we will be reading them out loud and you'll have a chance to answer. And so Nia's answer to the question, what advice would you give someone considering running for your position? Nia says, be yourself and know what you're passionate about. If you don't have a passion for your work, um, you won't enjoy your role and you won't add your full heart into it. She thinks it is important to have an open mind to ideas of other leaders running while you are running to see how your ideas can be combined with theirs. And so Nia's message is to know why you are running for the position and to know why you're passionate about Nesby. And it seems that everyone's answer is to be really passionate about what you're doing it would be the best route for you to go. And so moving on to our audience questions, we have our first question. After you have after you have mastered the balance between Nesby leadership and your other obligations, how do you stay energized in your role? Uh, so this is the two part question. So the second part of the question is, how do you show the membership your energy? And so uh, we will go in any order, um, whoever wants to begin. I guess I can start. Um, so the first part of that was after mastering the balance, how do you stay energized? Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's difficult sometimes, especially um, in between FRC and like now. Um, it, it's kind of hard to keep going, to keep pushing, and everyone reaches that point in their SB leadership career. But I think for me personally, it's really helpful to um, go back home. And when I say home, I mean to my chapter here at the University of Michigan. Uh, whenever I'm feeling like I need somebody to step in as chairperson, um, I go to my chapter GBM and I'll listen and watch the chapter leadership do their thing and thrive. And I'll watch um, how everyone is just loving on each other. And then I remember why it is that I got involved with Nesby in the first place. And it, almost immediately I'm recharged and I'm, I'm ready to get back in the game um, because I I can see the people that I'm serving and it's like no other feeling in the world. Um, so that's how I stay energized, how I show the membership, my energy. Mm. Um, I think it, it'll depend on um, the time of year. So I try to be as visible as possible around conference times. And that's just, again, strategic communications effort. Um, but when we're in person, you if you see me, you know, I'm trying to keep a smile on my face. I'm trying to stay positive despite like whatever is happening in the background. Um, and then if we're not in person, which a lot of our communication is virtual, um, I'm again just trying to stay positive, trying to inform members and stay, um, stay really consistent 
so that, you know, I know that there are periods of silence, like with, mem- with, with membership and leadership. Um, but I try to be as consistent as possible to show you guys that, you know, we're still here. We're still working. Um, we haven't died out. So would anyone else like to tag in on that? The question was after you balance after you mastered the balance between SB leadership and your other obligations, how do you stay energized in your role and how do you show the membership your energy? Um I, be, I believe that um, if you if you really have plans, if you start making plans before even think uh, getting the positions, like things you, you can envision with the with the role, um, I think that keeps you on your feet and keeps you thinking all the time because you're trying to see whatever you're thinking next would work for for them or not. Uh, trying to see if there are things that there already that needs to be uh, added more value with or just come with a new different idea. And so I believe just uh, and engaging engaging with the board and your like Shelby said with your chapter as well. It keeps it keeps you connected with the spirit, uh, even though uh, um, we have might we might have like in betweens, but it keeps you on your feet for for the for the most part. I wanted to kind of chime in on that. I think one thing that kind of helps keep me going is just doing different events out in the community. Like here in Chicago, we just had a walk for education and just seeing how many kids came out to that event and um, having two of our Nesby founders come out and speak at that event. You know, it's just different things like that. It just kind of brings back my passion to keep going. So um, I would just say, try to stay involved with the little things and not just always trying to um, be kind of like this bigger picture and working on the, the harder stuff, just really trying to enjoy the time at these different events and different activities that we host throughout the year. But besides that, do you have any other questions? Throw them in the live box. Um, if not, we'll probably go ahead and uh, close this virtual session out, but um, we'll Give a few moments here if anyone wants to type any last minute questions. So we have another question. Um, how much do you rely on other REB members to be successful in your role? So, um, oh, one second. Before we, before we ask that one, Nia's response to the last question was, for membership, it particularly helps out to reach out personally outside of village calls, answering emails is super important. This is a big part of the job um, and problem solving on, be- on behalf of your regional members. Okay. So how much do you rely on other REB, REB members to be successful in your role? We can start off with uh, Shelby. Um, One <laughs> 100%. I guess that's the the short answer. Um, as I mentioned before, the chairperson position is really hands off. Um, a lot of it is on the regional level. A lot of it is trusting the members of your board to um, stay involved, to stay active, to make sure that they are doing their part um, in achieving the mission, so that you know we can make what we said that we were going to make happen happen. Um, and a lot of that is trust because again, we are not in person. A lot of this is virtual, um, trusting that everyone is going to remain, um, responsible, remain proactive, remain communicating, um, and just working diligently to serve you guys. Um, so that is definitely a hundred percent. Now, speaking on behalf of the regional vice chairperson, um, that one is a little bit different because the vice chairperson's role is very hands-on as they are the manager of the board. They are the ones who is supposed to be making sure that um, every member of the board is working diligently and doing everything I just said. Um, They're holding everybody accountable, keeping track of action items, um, assigning specific tasks and and communicating them in that way. So um, 
I think that the person we depend on most is probably the vice chairperson, especially coming from the chairperson. Um, I'm definitely relying on the vice to to really, you know, hold me down, you know, to say the least. So uh, for me, 100 percent for the vice chair, not zero percent, but um, most people depend on the vice chairperson. So that's, that's kind of how that works. Um, I'll speak on that. Um, I it was at FRC where I realized that we were really a team, um, a team of uh, great people because um, you know, we could be someone could be done with your um, you know, agenda or workshop or whatever, but then we still assist other people on the board or with their workshops and stuff. So that made me realize that we uh we really depend on each other, and you know, f for some reason you always find someone to help you out do something and make sure you have a success in what you plan on doing. So that's what I love about this team for the most, uh, most part is we are really, we are a great team of uh, individuals who are willing to sacrifice their all for each other. Thank you, George. And um, while we'll all need a time to type, finish typing her answer, um, we will ask our next audience question, which is, what is the most challenging piece about being a regional leader within the membership zone? And so uh, you all can answer this in any order. All right. <laughs> um, so, I'm actually not a part of the regional membership zone. I'm a part of the national membership zone. And I imagine that they're quite different, um, mainly because of the work that they do, um, respectively. But I'm just going to go ahead and answer from the national perspective. <laughs> so uh, my experience with the national membership zone has been uh, um, a huge learning experience because it requires you to kind of take a step back and think a lot more high level um, where, and then George and Neil will have to fill in, where I imagine in the regional membership zone, a lot of it um, is more uh, data analysis, but using the data to um, make important decisions and, and execute those decisions um, in a way that is best for the regional membership. Where on the national level, um, we are working to serve the entire membership, so all of the society's membership. Um, and though I represent, you know, the mother region, um, it's important that I'm keeping, you know, uh, a very wide perspective and working with the other regional chairs and, and, and the national membership chairperson, national vice chairperson, um, to meet everybody's needs. And I guess passing that down to the regional membership zones. I mean, yeah, Shelby said everything um, pretty much on the membership zone. So as we um, said before, if you have any more questions, there is still time to uh, ask any last minute questions and shoot them out really quickly, or we will be closing this call soon. All right, so we got a question from, or Nia responded with reliance is heavy. Um, she would say that reliance upon herself and her other peers like uh, George Loco um, is mighty heavier and is more detrimental if you don't pull through because we don't do a large amount of legwork to make things happen, as people have said. She thinks uh, they rely on the board around conference to give the most love when we see each other face to face and many workshops wouldn't have happened without the support blood sweat and tears of everyone involved um we do have another question from kevin how does be how does a regional chair or reb member hold another member of the board accountable if it appears they aren't maximizing their impact 
within their role efficiently or effectively? So let me repeat that question. How does the regional chair or any REB member hold each other accountable if it appears that they aren't um, maximizing their impact in their role effectively? Um, let's switch it up a little bit. George Loco, you want to go first? So you were, you were breaking up, so I couldn't hear. Yeah. How does the REB hold each other accountable? And, you know, kind of what do we do if we realize that members aren't really living up to their potential or within their role effectively? Yeah. Um, I believe that, um, especially, I'll give you like a pretty recent um, example. Um, you know, as Shelby mentioned earlier, being on the national membership zone, um, they, you know, make sure that they try and keep us engaged, you know, within the group. And, you know, once we're done with FRC, everything tries to die, die down. And so I believe that Shelby definitely held, a, held us accountable for some certain things that we we're supposed to do. But we're not able to execute on time. However, it showed me, it gave me a reason to believe that um, it was for the only good of the organization. And I definitely, uh, you know, acknowledge a leader such as her, you know, actually holding us accountable for our own actions. And so, yes, there is definitely, um, um, you know, consequences, but it's beneficial for, uh, for the organization as a whole. Thank you. Okay. Um, Nia's response to that question was being big on communication, uh, really getting an understanding of the bylaws and um, what's called infractions. Maybe Shelby can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but still, we, we kind of respect each other with love and care. Um, but really, communication is what, she, what we do to hold each other accountable. Um, Shelby, you want to give your time? Yeah, sure. Um, so you guys, well, I covered it this time. Um, it is, you know, uh, the chair and vice chair's responsibility to hold the rest of the board accountable, um, and also to hold each other accountable. And I think, um, the way that we do so is based upon our leadership. Um, but then there is the infraction system, like Malik mentioned, um, which, you know, it starts with a warning. You keep acting up, you get some more infractions. You keep acting up, um, after your third infraction, there are, um, more um, lengthy consequences. So you can have uh, various privileges revoked. You can um, not end up at a conference or a convention. You could uh, more severely be impeached. We, got, we try not, not to get that far, um, given that we still are a family. We try to, you know, give somebody a, a quick reminder, one-on-one, -on -one, um, hey, don't forget to do X, Y, and Z. Hey, do you need anything from me? And I think um, the biggest part of that is trying to empathize when possible. Um, because again, remember, we are, we're humans. We're also full-time students. Um, and it's just really important to remember that, you know, Juan Nesby is very important. It's not life. It's not like, like life or death. Um, so just remembering that it, you need to be um, understanding. But... I think still sort of strict. So I think it really just depends on the situation, but ultimately um, try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I would say another big thing that help keeps us accountable um, are our advisors. I think they're really great with that. They don't let us slack off in any way. Um, and so that's just another way to kind of keep everybody accountable and sort of speak. But Really, you know, REB leaders should be wanting to do the work, so we shouldn't have anyone who's not willing to do it. And so a lot of times if we come to cross problems and we can just communicate with one another, more than likely someone else is able to help that other person out. Um, I think we got another question. Yeah. Uh I will read out our next question. So the next question is, how do you inspire others to consider your current leadership seat? Is it ever too early to start? And um, we can begin with George Loco. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think there's ever a time where someone says you become a leader. I think everyone becomes a leader at their own pace. And so if you believe that you're too early in the game, I, I, I would say, no, you're not. You're definitely on time. And so just go ahead and get involved, put all hands on deck, and, you know, go for it. Don't, like, make time be the reason why you don't want to grow because you eventually will grow. So don't be scared to do that. Hey, George, can you repeat the first part of the question for me? You said, how do I inspire people to do what? How do you inspire others to consider your current leadership seat? And so in your case, the regional chair. And is it ever too early to start? Oh, no, it's never too early. Um, I think that the main way that I inspire people, well, there are a couple of ways, but um, one, by example, just being a really great chairperson, being a really relatable chairperson, um, reminding people that, again, like I said, I'm a human, I'm a student, just like you guys. Um, I'm a black woman, just like a lot of you all. Um, so these are things that we have in common. These are things that just kind of, uh, I guess, make me relatable. Um, and I think that a lot of the one-on-one conversations that I've had with um, people on the board, which have the presidents, people at conferences, also play a really important role in that, just really spending time with people. Um, but again, I, I really just think it's important to kind of um, do like a myth busters type thing because I think a lot, a lot of people will have um, unrealistic expectations of the chairperson position or they'll really misunderstand um, what it means to be a chairperson uh, or what this experience is like. And like I mentioned earlier, it is a demanding role, um, but so is being a black female in a predominantly white um, field at a PWI. So, yes, it's demanding, but it's also the most rewarding thing I've ever done like in life. Um, and, you know, it's the, everything is possible. It's definitely not impossible to balance this with school um, with friendships, romantic relationships, with other student organizations, um, personal aspirations and jobs. And, like, it's, it's definitely doable. Um, just need to make sure that you have a, a good support system. So, but in those myths, uh, being relatable, and I guess inspiring with my actions. And Nia uh, pretty much agrees with everyone else. Never too early to start. Um, you have to see within yourself. You have to believe within yourself to um, to make that first step. And so start as soon as you can. And so our next question is, if you can give one piece of advice to a collegiate member that is considering uh, candidacy, candidacy, candidacy for your role, what would it be and why? And I will repeat that question because I know I kind of jacked it up a little bit. If you can, if you could get one piece of advice to a collegiate member that is considering candidacy for your role, what would it be and why? And so, um, no particular order. I'll let you guys answer. Um, like I think we like we said it for the most part uh, from you know this panel, um, you just have to believe in what you want what you want to achieve, and you just um, just go for it. Just just do just do it. Um, don't hesitate. Just go for it if you if you feel you feel it in your spirit. Um, and so yeah, I mean, there's nothing more I could say but just to enjoy the journey as you go, and no regrets. Um, I'd say, come talk to me. Um, I don't have all the answers to everything, but uh, like I mentioned before, a huge part of what pushed me into this role was talking to the last year person. Um, not only did she give me like inside and give me like, you know, a peek into her experience, but she encouraged me. Um, she was able to identify 
you know, uh, strengths of mine that I didn't even know about that fit the position. And um, she really helped cultivate, I guess, my potential. And then in the months before, um, we had to submit, you know, applications for, for elections. So really come talk to me. We can talk it out if you're back and forth about it. Um, let's, let's do this together. You, like, you don't have to do this by yourself. So Nia's answer is, again, to know your passions and know why you're getting started. And so she says, if you start brainstorming now on how you manage everything, uh, when you become a part of the uh, the regional leadership board, it wouldn't be a problem. So know your passions. Don't be afraid to go for it. And so... Seeing that there are no more questions in the chat. Don't see any last minute questions popping up. So um, we will go ahead and end this panel. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us. Um, just for your information, our next panel will be next week, Thursday, same time. And we will have the program zone. And so if you can join us next week, uh, we will be here to answer every question you all have. So thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. See you guys. Good night, everybody. Good night.